Grab your studio kit or learning box and get the following supplies out. Begin by collecting different magazine images. Try to collect images that are different colors. Collect light colors, dark colors, your favorite colors, all different variations. Choose a magazine image that you've collected to draw the shape of your head. Remember, the shape of our head is almost like an oval, but it gets narrower at the bottom. Your chin might make your oval pointier at the bottom or rounder. Look closely to find out. After you've cut out the shape of your head with scissors, also make the shape for your neck. Your neck is a rectangle shape. Make sure that you cut out a neck that is big enough for the head that you've cut out. I'm going to show you how to cut out two of the same eye at the same time. Choose a magazine page that you'd like to use for the whites of your eyes. Remember, our eyes are almond or football shaped. After I finish drawing one eye on my piece of paper, I'm going to fold it in half. Once I'm done folding it in half, then I can begin cutting and I'll get two of the exact same shape. Next, let's work on our nose. When I make a nose, I use three letter U's. I use one big U for the middle of my nose and two smaller letter U's for the side. Then, to make the bridge of my nose, I take one line up all the way to where my eyes would go. You may know lots of different ways to make noses, and I encourage you to find the way that best works for you. Whatever way you make a nose, just make sure that you're looking really closely to find the shapes that make up your nose. Now let's work on our mouth. Think about the type of face that you want to be making in your portrait. In my portrait, I want to be smiling, so the line that parts my lips will be curving upwards. Then I can make my top lip, which is like a flattened end shape. I can use my top lip to make the shape for my bottom lip. My bottom lip is like a C shape. Once I cut this out, I can add the two together to make my mouth. Now that I've created all of the main features of my face, I can go back and carefully add the details. I'm looking closely to find the shapes that make up the different details of my face. When I look closely at my eyes, I can find smaller circles that go inside of them. I'm going to use that tip from earlier to help me cut out the same shape more than once. When I am creating hair, I do not focus on every individual strand. Instead, I'm trying to create large sections in order to make up the hair on my head. I prefer to rip paper in order to make my hair because it's not a shape that I can define like a circle or a rectangle. I'm looking closely at the organic shapes that make up my hair to overlap and arrange my hair in a way that makes sense for my head.
Next, I can work on creating a shirt. When I'm creating a shirt, I hold it up to my portrait in order to decide how big I need to make the neck hole for my shirt. Then I can cut out my shoulders and my neck hole and slowly take away paper at the bottom until it fits correctly on my paper. As you can see, it takes me a few tries in order to get the right size. When you finish creating your portrait, make sure you put all of your studio supplies away. Images that I want to keep will go back inside of my magazine. Then my scissors, my glue, and my magazine will go back inside of my studio kit or learning box. Paper that I don't want to keep will get thrown away or recycled.